Hello everybody, welcome back to Kenny's Museum of Memorabilia. Um, okay, uh, today I'm going to show you uh, an update on something I haven't done for a while, an update on my uh, Steelbook uh, Blu-ray movie collection. Um, but first of all, um, to address a question that was... Um, that was asked of me the other day. I bumped into one of the, one of my acquaintances, and we we got around to talking about my videos. And um, he said to me, um, "Do you regard yourself as a, a collector or a hoarder? And what's the difference?" Um, I th I thought it was an interesting question. Um, and um, as I say, I would I would like to address it today because it comes to bear. On, uh, on on the stuff I'm going to show you actually. Um, now, I've always thought of collecting as um, a journey towards completion. Well, that's about the best way I can put it. Um, and the analogy I use to try and explain uh, the difference between collecting and hoarding was this. Um, if you if you set out to say collect, just for argument's sake, um, <clears throat> a set of two hundred football stickers in an album, okay. Um, obviously, the the idea is to to complete that that set of two hundred um, by whatever means possible. Um, now, as a collector, um, I would buy loads of stickers. Um, get loads of swaps, obviously. Try and use those swaps um, by friends, um, online sites or whatever to try and uh, trade for those cards that I didn't have and at some point uh, reach the goal of, of completion. Whereas, if I were a hoarder, I think I would just keep on buying, buying, buying until, you know, obviously I had a lot of stickers and a lot of swaps, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily use those swaps. I would just keep, keep going. I may, may, may sort of like resort to eBay um, to, 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 to finish the collection, but what I'm saying is I would probably keep everything that I'd bought rather than pass on those um, swaps or whatever that I didn't need. So that, that's kind of my idea of, of, of collecting versus hoarding and uh, reaching a goal, getting rid of your doubles rather than uh, just keeping everything, you know. And, and the, reason, the reason I mention this is because it, um, it comes to bear on what I'm going to show you today. Um, so it's been a while since I actually did an update for, for, for films. Uh, about nine months ago, I think the last one. So, I've picked up quite a few, a few bits and pieces since then. But, um, I, when I first started collecting um, Blu-ray movie still books, it was for the aesthetic. Um, I just loved them as soon as I sort of from day one when I saw them, and the idea was that I would collect them all. Um, unfortunately, um, due to online dealers like Zavi flooding the market, <clears throat> it became soon became apparent that um, that might not be possible because instead of one a week or less than one a week in the early days, you know, you were getting half a dozen a week, which amounts to a fair few bob. Um, but for a, for a while there, I I carried on just buying um, movie still books, regardless if they were cheap, you know, I'd buy them, buy them. Um, and I suppose in that situation, I had become a hoarder rather than a collector because now I've scaled that down um, and I'm just getting still books for films that I have been seen and enjoyed films that I would maybe like to see or still books that appeal to me aesthetically because that's the reason I got into still books in the first place. 
So uh, there's just a little explanation there uh, before we get going. So let's get into it. Um, right, I normally say the best till last, but I thought we'd um, we'd buckle that trend today and uh, go with this. Okay. Um, that is um, a collection of seven old, seven old horror black and white films. And all of the steel books have been illustrated by Alex Ross. Now, any of you, any of you who are into comics, will, will be, be well familiar with with Alex Ross because he's, he's one of the one of the top artists in my opinion. Um, and all of these all of these seven steel books are, are done in black and white by Alex Ross. Um, originally, um, I was I pre-ordered these when they when they first came on the market. They were about sixteen quid each. Um, but unfortunately, as it came closer to the release date, um, I realised that I wasn't exactly flush with money and I had to cancel the pre-orders. Um, but it worked out in my favour because um, Zavi recently came up with this box, uh, all seven films for 70 quid. So a quick bit of math there, you know, 16 quid times seven is against um, seven times ten. Uh, it means I've saved myself 42 quid by by just being patient, which is something I'm always uh, I'm always banging on about. You know, as, as one of the things as a collector, it's one of the qualities that is required. So you know, I mean, 42 quid is is, is quite a kind of saving, and hasn't been out that long. Um, so we'll just we'll just open the box here, and I'll show you. Um, one of the things that have always annoyed me are these these wrap-around sleeves. Now, unbelievably, um, this box has got a wrap-around sleeve. Um, as you can see there at the back, it uh, it comes away. Um, I, I couldn't believe that one, but um, not to worry. We'll we'll get the box open, and I'll I'll give you a quick I'll give you a quick view of the um, of the individual steel books. Just tip them out there so we can. Get them a bit more easy. Whoops. Try not to chuck them on the floor while we're at it. Okay. Um, right. There we go. Right. There's the um, there's the first one. I mean, these these are all, all beautifully done. Um, that's the that's the Invisible Man. I think an old nineteen thirties film maybe with with Claude Rains. So some of you might remember from. Um, from the Humphrey Bogart film, which I can't, I can't think of a fan, but um, not to worry, there we are. Um, so they, these have got the daft, daft covers on as well. I just, I don't think there's much, um, much to report on the back. The usual boring stuff that you get with uh, with backs, unfortunately. Right. So next we have. Um, Got Boris Karloff in the in the mummy. And there again, I, th I think most of these are from the from the thirties. I think there might be the odd forties, one from the fifties. I think, but um, basically, um, I, won't, I won't even bother showing you the backs because they're all um, fairly generic. But yeah, they, these these so these are very nicely done. Um, I'm glad they did them in black and white because um, it seems it seems appropriate for. For old black and white films. Yeah, there's the um, there's the Wolf Man. All of these have been digitally restored, by the way. So although I haven't actually got round to watching any of them, um, they they should all be looking uh, very nice in in black and white. Actually, blue bl uh, black and white on Blu-ray looks. Um, Looks particularly smart, you know. I remember seeing Sin City. I know, I know, it's got a bit of colour to it in places, but basically it's black and white, and that looked um, that looks amazing. Now there's Boris again, Boris Karloff, Frankenstein. Um, and we have the sequel to that, which was not quite as good. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein. I mean, lovely, just lovely covers. I mean, I've not seen anything look this good for <coughs> for years. Um, 
I'm glad I managed to pick them up eventually. So they were 10 each. I'm not complaining. You get a nice collector's box with them as well. There's good old uh, Bella Lugosi and the original Dracula, which a lot of people still prefer. Um, I've got no comment because I'm not a big, a big fan of, um, of Dracula, but never mind. And now I think I think this was probably from the 50s. This one, but creature from the Black Lagoon. So beautifully. Beautifully rendered and um, a little set that I was very glad to add to my collection. So we'll just stick those over there out of the way. Okay, um, now we'll get into the the rest of them. Right, um, this this one came out came out just recently. Thor Ragnarok. Um, not bad. Not bad. Um, I've been a bit up and down with, with some of the Marvel films of late. Um, I thought two was pretty awful. I thought um, Captain America two wasn't great. The Winter Soldier, um, Iron Man three. Well, I've, I've moaned on about that forever in, in one of the other videos I did. It's just a horrible film. Um, anyway, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, it was it was it was a bit sort of like light and, and comedic in places, but. Um, it had um, yeah plenty of good, plenty of good moments. That's quite an unusual cover for for Marvel, I have to say. Um, like the back, likes to change. Um, so I'm always banging on about the the backs being pretty boring. But um, okay, now here's one. Here's one that was bought for my. 70th birthday recently and that's the only reason I got it because it's quite pricey the first Guardians of the Galaxy now um, as you say it's still sealed um, if, if I'm if I'm not going to watch a film um, immediately I tend to leave them sealed because obviously it protects them from you know the normal ravages of dirt and dust and steam from the kitchen or whatever you know so um, yeah, I mean that one deserves to be kept sealed because, as I say, it's it's quite pricey these days. Um, it's not quite up there with your with your Iron Man or your Thor. They're the first two of those. But uh, <clears throat> if you want if you want a sealed copy of that, I'll set you back a few, Bob. Um, and then recently we had the the second Guardians film. And then, so I'm not so I'm not so fussed about that cover. I don't know if the back's any better. I wish I wish everybody would do these um, do these little little sleeves with a box at the bottom that you can just slip them in and out. It's a lot easier. Um, yeah, the curse of the curse of the back. <laughs> I wish that, I really wish they would. You know, for what, for the prices they charge for these. I mean, one of these about twenty three quid on Zavi. Yeah, yeah they. Really should be making more efforts. Um, you know, when you when you see the sort of stuff that the <clears throat> the Japanese and the Germans get, um, we're very lazy with our with our presentation by and large. <clears throat> Righty, um, yeah, this was one that I had to get. It's um, it's the Westworld TV series. Um, I enjoyed this, so I've got to say, I wasn't, wasn't a big fan of the. Of the movies uh, that came out way back there in the seventies, was it? I don't know, a bit a bit later, but uh, yeah, I was a big fan of this. I, I like I like Anthony Hopkins. He's one of my one of my top guys when it comes to when it comes to the art of acting. Um, um, yeah, so say so at least this has got a more solid um, plastic folder of uh, wrap around with it, and um, you actually get a little. Um, Let's get a little booklet with it as well. Um, yeah, just uh, just bits and pieces from the from the movie. Um, I don't think the back's uh, anything to write home about. No, it isn't. So I won't even bother to show you because uh, I say backs annoy me. Right. Um, Kidoki. 
Now that is what I call a nice steel book. I do like that. Um, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of the recent pirate films. I enjoyed the first one. Really liked the first one at the cinema. Second film I thought was oh, it's horrible. The third one not so bad, and then the recent one, the Blackbeard one, I thought was oh, I didn't get through it. I never went to the cinema to see it because I feared the worst and I watched it on, on, on my Blu-ray copy and I got about halfway in and woo, sleepy time. Um, didn't like it at all. This 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 film is is a bit better. It's not it's not a return to the form of the um of the very first film, but um as I say aesthetically it is it is a nice still book. Um and it's got a bit of a back to it as well. Uh, not a bad image, but uh, like I say, that's um, that's embossed. I'll give you a closer, closer look at the embossing. Uh, yeah, I wish uh, I wish all steel books were like that because it's um, it's aesthetically very pleasing to me. That one, do like it. Okay, and there is a classic, Big Lebowski. Uh, Jeff Bridges' uh, finest hour. Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've always loved this film. It, it's it's um, kind of a comedy comedy drama for anybody who hasn't seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, <coughs> I urge you to seek out the copy because uh, it's um, it, it's a very entertaining film. Um, even if it is the basic plot does revolve around somebody peeing on uh, on Jeff Bridges' character's carpet, but never mind. Um, there is there is quite a lot, big lot to it as well. Um, I'm not going to bother with the back because it's all it's one of these that's got the little sticky on it. But uh, yeah, that's that's a good film, and it's um, yeah, it's not a bad looking, not a bad looking still book. I've seen worse. <clears throat> right, um, this this was this was bought for me for for Christmas, I believe. Uh, I've seen it. It's uh, just a bit of bit of fluff, really. It's not uh, not the greatest film I've ever seen, but it was it was vaguely entertaining uh, because you know, as you know, I'm a big gamer and uh, there's a good old Pac Man there. But um, yeah, from what I remember of it, it was just uh, just a bit of a laugh. I don't remember too much about the plot or whatever because it's a while since I've seen it now but um, yeah yeah I'm quite happy to have the steel book as a as, as a present no complaints at all um, yeah I bought this one from fairly recently second hand um, it's another one that I was thinking about buying when it came out I have seen it it's, it's quite a good film as, as boxing films go um, but uh, this, this was only about a fiver in keck so Thought, yeah, why not? It's a film I enjoyed. It's not not the greatest steel book in the world, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's got a more interesting back cover. But uh, that's not my idea of uh, aesthetically pleasing. But there you go. It's a film I quite enjoyed, and it was cheap, so I ain't complaining. Yeah, it's been been a while. Um, I remember. I remember HMV flogging this all oh, many moons ago and the price just wouldn't come down, you know, it was stuck up there around 27 quid. Um, it's another film that I've seen, but um, it was okay. Uh, I know a lot of people raved about it. I wasn't uh, as keen, but um, yeah, it was it was watchable and um, the, the Blu-ray is quite nice. Um, so if there's anything interesting on the back here, yeah, it's... Um, there you go, there's Tiger, or no, Mr. Something, I can't remember his flaming name, but uh, yeah, that's not um, that's not too bad of a still book. Um, okay, this was another this was another Christmas present, um, short circuit, no classic. Um, as still books go, it's pretty dull, but. Um, was bought for me so it didn't cost me anything I ain't complaining righty now yeah Donnie Darko what can I say about this film um, apart from the fact that the first time I saw it I thought it was 
weird, crazy. Um, I couldn't get it at all. Um, I've actually actually read a bit about it online, and um, things have become a bit more clear to me. But um, it's still it's still a crackers film. Um, not so well appreciated when it came out, but of course it's become a a cult classic. You know that that dreaded phrase. But um, yeah, it's, I mean it's not uh, it's not too bad of a steel book and. Uh, no, it's all stuck down at the back, so that's all you're going to get to see of that one. Okay, now let's move on. I'll show you these these four together. These are the um, these are the four Transformers films. Um, they come in. They come in a slipcase. The the actual image. Is the same as the slip cover, I believe. Just test that theory. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, just, uh, some sort of logo on the back there. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's quite nice. I tend to like to like silver and black together. Um, goes well. Um, I'll say that was um, when Xavier was selling those. I couldn't. I missed. I missed the set. There was a box set of them, but I actually missed that, so I had to buy them. I had to buy them individually. That's the that's the first film actually. I've got these out of order, but uh, so they're they're quite nice. Um, I could have I could have waited uh, a few months and got them a bit cheaper, but heck actually I, I don't I don't mind the Transformers films I mean I saw saw the third film um, I think this one um, at the cinema in 3D and I thought it looked absolutely amazing in 3D um, but um, yeah I mean so as, as steelbooks go these days um, I think they're quite stylish especially this one um, I think this one looks very nice, Dark of the Moon. Um, yeah, so nice to have all, all four in a set. I mean, the last, the last one wasn't, uh, the last one wasn't all that great. I went to see that, um, see that in IMAX. Um, even in IMAX, wasn't anything to shout about. Right. Oh dear. Uh, not the best actor in the world, Danny Trejo, but then again, nor is Arnie or Arnie Schwarzenegger or Dolph Lundgren, but they're still quite entertaining in their own way. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw it a while back and it's just uh, just an adventure about this bloke who chucks noise at everybody. As you can see in the picture there, um, there is a, there was a, um, there was a sequel to it, um, which I've also seen, which was also about a bloke who chucks knives at people with not much plot. But uh, yeah, it took me it took me a while to get that one. Um, I've been eyeballing it around certain places, but this was only five quid, so I like that actually. Should have had that on the front. Um, yeah, for a fiver, I thought. Yeah, it looks quite nice. Then we'll have it. Here's another film that. I didn't really get the grips with at the cinema, but um, I like the steel book, and it was it was fairly cheap. Um, I don't know what it was about this film; it didn't uh, didn't grab me at all. Even though Hugh Jackman was in it, who I do like, he's normally a good turn. But uh, yeah, Chappie, I think it's all stuck down. It is so. <clears throat> there you go. So you're going to get to see that one. Righty, now we've got a few projects. Pop arts. Now I like these because they've. <clears throat> I'm trying. I'm trying to get a full, a full set of these. I'm still got a few to go. But um, as I say, these were, these were bought for me um, either. I think it was at Christmas. Um, da Vinci Code. Um, as I say they've all, they've always got very unusual and stylish covers. Um, I'm not far away from a complete set I don't think of at least of the UK releases um, and there's a, another one I didn't didn't even know this one existed I've never seen it about but 
my daughter found it for me uh, online and it's another one of the another one for the pop art collection um, I've already got um, already got a copy of this I've got the original um, original copy of the of the district mine steel book uh, which was play.com way back in the day when they used to trade um, that one's not as interesting as the original but um, it's still um, still got a stylish look to it and yeah here's a film film I've never bought a taxi driver sorry about the big sticker there but um, yeah I like that it's um, got a certain and pop art, pop art style about it. Um, not a film, not a film that I'm enamoured with as, as much as other people. I mean, it is, it is a decent film, but um, I don't sort of like put it in the classic bracket that uh, a lot of people um, rate it at. And there's um, Lawrence of Arabia. I'll have to get around to watching that um, at some stage. Even I think it's about three hours long. So. Better, better book a long night with a, with a packet of crisps and a bottle of tyres or something <laughs> to watch that one. But uh, yeah, I think it's a film that deserves to be seen. Um, but uh, yeah, another one for the for the pop art collection. Okay, now we'll come to some more more recent films. I just got this the other day. This very annoying cover that won't stick down um yeah justice league um i know a lot of people weren't enamored with this um i i find that with 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 some films um like fantastic beasts and way to find them um i find the imax effect has a big influence on, on my judgment of a film these days um, because I enjoyed this at, at the IMAX cinema, um, but not so much when I watched it the other night, just on an ordinary TV. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe it was just over familiarity, having seen the film fairly recently. But um, it's not. Um, yeah. Uh, I was a bit disappointed with the with the actual aesthetic of the steel book. I mean, it's nicely. I'll show you, I'll show you there. It is it is embossed, even though you can't see it very well there. Um, but I thought it was a bit of a dull, uh, a dull cover. You know, when you compare it with, I mean, DC films. Um, I've had some pretty decent covers like Suicide Squad. I mean, that was a lovely, a lovely steel book, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just um, something about that one that I didn't find too appealing. Right, here we go. Um, here's a couple of films I've just watched. These in the last two nights. Um, Attack on Titan, part one and part two. Um, yeah, this is one of these, um, these weird... Not much to report on the back, sadly. Um... These were these are Japanese films with subtitles, uh, which might put a lot of people off. But um, the Japanese do some weird stuff, um, and this is no exception. Um, it's a long, long sort of like convoluted story about people trapped inside these walls, and there's these sort of like titans that are out on the outside, which are a large human beings that come and eat them. Um, yeah, that's all I need to tell you about that one. <laughs> No doubt you'd all rush out and buy a copy now, but um, yeah, those those were bought for me as uh, as presents. I may I may or may not have bought them, but uh, as a present, as I say, no worries. Right, it took me a while to get around to this one. That's the Thor: The Dark World. Um, that almost completes my Marvel collection. Um, I just need just need a copy of the original Captain America: Winter Soldier, and then. I think I'm I'm complete. Uh, when I'm complete, I'll do a I'll do a video on uh, on the Marvel uh, uni Marvel Cinematic Universe collection. But um, yeah, it's uh, not a bad steel book. That I quite like the I quite like the the 
grey and then if you open it up it's uh, like, a, like a wrap around thingy. I don't, I don't like the way they Marvel have elected not to put the title on the on the uh, spine these days but um, yeah not, not a great film but um, I, I quite like the steelbook. Now this was one of the this was one of the big surprises of last year. Um, I'm not um, so I'm totally familiar with the with the anime, uh, even though I do have. Um, I'm just trying to see if I can get this off without making a complete mess of it. Uh, never mind. Um, can't be bothered ripping all that stuff off. Um, yeah, Ghost in the Shell. Um, there again, it was an IMAX 3D, and it looked lovely. Gorgeous looking film, uh, Scarlett Johansson, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it it wasn't it wasn't a very long film. I think it was about an hour and a half or something. But um, I found it very stylish. I know, you know, a few few fans of Ghost in the Shell weren't all that um, impressed. But um, as someone who's not familiar with that universe totally, um, I found it to be. Very, very, uh, very, very lovely on IMAX. The sound and and and, uh, and, and the visuals was uh, was absolutely spot on, and the story wasn't bad either. And it's a nice still book. I mean, that that didn't take long to sell out actually on Zavi, so I was glad I jumped in early for that one. Um, right, we're back to DC again. Um, right, that's not a bad still book. Um, quite a nice image from the film. Um, yeah, yeah, I did. I didn't mind the film at all. It was um, something a bit, uh, a bit different from your, from your super groups and your blokes running around. Um, it was, um, I'd say, it was slightly better than Suicide Squad, which I did enjoy. But um, DC uh, kind of getting back to form for me. I know, I know a lot of people. Not not been keen on some of the more recent DC films, but uh, yeah, I mean I found that to be to be very watchable, and uh, again I saw that in IMAX. Right now we'll have a we'll have a big rant about this one. Um, Batman v Superman: Dawn of Justice. <clears throat> I can't understand why everybody went ballistic over this. You know, saying how bad it was. How awful it was! Uh, I've, I've not, I'm not, I mean, I'm not seen anybody have much good to say about it. To be honest, um, now I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great film personally, um, but um, I'm obviously in the minority. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, as a steel book, it's okay. Um, I don't think I can get there back off without a lot of ripping and I don't want to rip the thing so yeah I mean, it's got an interesting back as well I think it's Superman on the other side with the Batman logo as I remember um, in fact yeah you can see it there um, so yeah I mean I I really couldn't find much wrong with that film at all but say sue me um, right uh, this was I think arguably it's a tight run thing with this and Ghost in the Shell but I, I thought this was probably my favourite film of, of 2017 um, there again I, I went to the IMAX to see it and um, it was just a nice change from the usual superhero dynamic you know it was um, it was just sort of like Logan in um, you know, an, an older, an older version of Logan, and of course an older, prefer, older version of Professor X who had dementia, and this um, this young lady, um, trying to think, X X something or other, she was X twenty three, I think, from the same sort of like um, same places where he originated. She was great. The actress um, <clears throat> took her role was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and I just thought it was a, it was a, it was a, a good, good, solid film, you know, without without the usual superhero trappings, you know, it was more a, 
um, more a straightforward um, drama. Um, I, mean, I mean, obviously, you know, there's, there's a lot of blood and guts in it and shootings and what have you. It's not, not the sort of thing you take your, you take your ten year old to see. But um, yeah, I, I thought that was a really, really solid, solid movie. And as I say, I, I don't think I seen it, I saw anything better in 2018. So pleased with that one. Um, yeah, Logan. Okay, now we come to the, the last few. Um, yeah, life. Um, that was. Um, I tend to like these uh, kind of quasi science fiction films um, set on space stations and whatever. I don't know. Don't know what it is about those sort of films, but I find them very. Um, it's a suspenseful, shall we say? This is a. I suppose you could. If you were going to, if you were going to knock this film, you could say it's just an alien knockoff. But uh, I don't, I don't think it would be kind to, 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 to say that about it. You know, um, it was. Um, I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of exposition in it, um, but there, there is quite a bit of action as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you like, you know, if you like those alien esque type of of movies then um, you could do a lot worse than uh, than watch that one okay now we have um, there we have the original Blade Runner uh, what's this one the yeah I think mean, that's the, the final cut um, I'm always I'm always conflicted um, with, with 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 the new versions of this because although I like the film um, I like the original cinematic version with the voiceover. Um, Ridley Scott doesn't. So most of the cuts we've had, well, all of the cuts we've had recently, um, have been without the voiceover. Um, uh, the the I, I have I have got a version. I have got a sort of like collector's edition um, of this, which does include the the voiceover version, but. Um, yeah, I couldn't let this one go by. Um, the final cut, so because I like the film so much, um, had to have it. And mm, now, this is a weird one for me because um, I am a big fan of the original film, and I was, what's the word? A bit distraught when I came out of the cinema watching this. Um, I didn't enjoy it at all, and I can only imagine that the reason I didn't enjoy it was because even even on the IMAX screen with the great sound and everything, um, the very first scene I I couldn't hear what, what the guy was saying. You know, it was uh, Dave Bautista, the guy from. Guardians who plays Drax, um, he was mumbling through his lines and, and, and I kind of lost it. You know, when you when you get lost on the very first scene, you you're trying to catch up all the way through the film. Oh, what's going on? What, what did he say? Does it have any bearing on on what's happening now? And I just I just went through the film just a bit lost to be honest. Um, I've I've rewatched it on on I've rewatched this copy and. I did kind of warm to it a little bit more, but um, compared with the first film, um, I was overall disappointed. <coughs> okay, here's another one. Another film I've seen, um, Beauty and the Beast. <coughs> it was okay. It wouldn't would normally be my type of film, but it was um, it was a nice film to watch, and that is. <clears throat> that this one sold out on Savvy as well. I mean, I picked this one up um, later on. I think it came back. I think I think it went went out of stock on Savvy, and then it came back briefly and went out of stock again. And I managed to uh, to pick it up during that period. But um, yeah, that's a nice steel book. I like that. I wasn't going to buy it, and then I thought, no, that looks too nice to to uh, to pass over. So. That's the reason we've uh, we've added that one to the collection. Um, here's another another IMAX special. 
that I went to see. Yeah, it was um, it was okay. You know, plenty of action. Um, uh, you know, aesthetically, it was it was nice to look at, um, especially in IMAX 3D. You know, but um, yeah, you know, I've watched it again since, and it loses a bit. But uh, it's a it's a fairly solid. Um, Fairly solid action adventure, not much more I can say about it really. Um, right, now go this one and miss at the cinema because I'm not, um, not a big fan of Spider Man to be honest. I, I don't mind the don't mind the first three films with uh, with Tobey Maguire, but the uh, the two Andrew Garfield films I didn't like at all and uh, because I'm not a big fan of the character, I decided to give this a miss. And to be honest, I'm glad I did because I didn't think it was all that great on uh, on on Blu-ray. Wasn't that fast? Um, it, uh, it it was actually hard to find this because it went out of stock very early. But I went to one of the smaller online uh, retailers and got it got it actually a bit cheaper than uh, than I would have had to pay. If uh, if it's still been in stock at the the major outlets, um, it's actually got um, got this little little plastic cover with a fridge magnet. That's a fridge magnet, and uh, inside you get a little um, a little comic book. Um, oops, the actual proper cover, which you couldn't see before, but it doesn't look much different to the to the actual fridge magnet. So uh, yeah, it's. Um, it's one I wasn't too enamoured with, let's put it that way. Okay, um, now there's, this is the um, this is the twin to a variant that they brought out for the first Star Trek film uh, with, um, with, with Kirk on the cover. I've got that one, I'll have showed it to you in a previous video. But um, yeah, this one, this one uh, is, is a rare of the two, but it popped up. It popped up fairly uh, cheaply on on eBay, so I thought, well, I've got the film, but I like the film and I like that cover, and I need the I need to pair the two up, you know, the two matching covers. So um, it's got a little uh, it's got a little dink in it somewhere, but uh, it was it was cheap, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna moan too much. Right, here's another another one that had everybody split down the middle. Um, because uh, nobody seems satisfied, you know, with with the popularity of the first Alien film, nobody's been all that satisfied with the uh, with the sequels. Um, I like Prometheus. I, I thought it was a good film. Uh, this one was okay. Um, I didn't like it as much as Prometheus, but it's um, it's quite tense. Um, got a good turn from Michael Fassbender as David, who you remember from Prometheus. No, the uh, the android or whatever uh, that he wants to call himself, and uh, yeah, I mean it was a solid, um, solid film. I didn't mind it at all. Um, okay, now here's a couple of films I'm going to show you now where I despaired of finding these actually at a, a decent price. I mean, both of them sold out on. They were both as heavy exclusives, and I remember they both sold out fairly quickly. Uh, Ex Machina. Yeah, it's um, basically uh, it's kind of a science fiction film about um, an android. Um, I quite enjoyed it when I saw it, but uh, the still book is absolutely lovely. I'm just trying to show you the... I can't quite get it right. Yeah, you can probably see it there. Um, that's all embossed. It's a lovely still book. Um, I mean, I enjoyed the film. I would have bought it anyway for the film, but um, especially for the for the actual steel book itself, it's one of the one of the nicest steel books I've got, I think. Um, and I found it a very reasonable price. You know, people were charging uh, well, not silly prices for it, but let's put it this way: more than I wanted to pay. But yeah, you know, I think I dug that out for about fifteen quid um, new. So. No complaints there, quite happy to have it, and even more happy to get this. Because um, <laughs> that was commanding some steep prices on on eBay. Um, but I managed to find uh, find a guy who... Um, I don't know 
wanted to buy it now on eBay or whether I had to bid for it, but uh, it was cheap. Let's put it this way, it was about half the price that I expected to pay for it, so around about 20 quid mark, and it has been it has been up there in, in the 50s. Um, there again, it's, uh, it's a used copy, but it's in absolutely mint condition. Um, now I'm, uh, you know, you might have gathered from a few of my comments on, on previous videos that I'm in love with with Angelina and Jolie. Um, but I knew there'd be a but with this because I had a feeling that uh, they would do it. But, guys, whoever did this, whoever designed this, there is no excuse for that. There's no excuse. That is disgusting. If you can put nice artwork inside, which that is, I'd love to have seen that on the back. There is absolutely no excuse for that. And um, if I ever meet the person who designed this still book, I will shoot them. Seriously. Right, that's that. And last but not least, um, this was another another Zavi exclusive. Um, I bought this because I like the look of it. I love gold steelbooks. I love them. Um, the the film is something of a of a classic as well. So yeah, I had to have that one. Uh, there again, it's another three-hour jobby, so it might take me a while to uh, get around to watching it. Okay, well, thank you for your indulgence, everybody. Um, that's uh, all I have to show you on the movie steelbook front. We're up to date now. And next up, not too long, I hope, will be um, my expanded Destiny collection. We'll finally get around to doing it. So thank you for watching and goodbye.